Jabid says, what was the wisdom behind Prophet's prohibition on, on burying the dead when the sun is rising, setting, and it at its zenith? Is it because it was a practice of the fire worshippers to do this? Now, Jabid's question comes to a lot of us when it's pertaining to rules of Islam. What he's referring to is the hadith of Uqba ibn Amir. May Allah be pleased with him, where he said that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from praying at three times and from burying our deceased at these times. And he mentioned that when the sun is rising and when the sun is setting and when the sun is at its zenith, and that is approximately five to six minutes before the adhan of dhuhr. So a person says, what's the wisdom? And the answer would be that as Muslims, we do not require a justification for everything that comes in the Quran and the Sunnah. Otherwise, we would not be good servants and slaves of Allah. Whenever a master tells his slave, go and fetch me this item from the market. And the slave says, why? What are you going to do with it? What is the wisdom of me going now? Why can't I buy it next week? This is unacceptable because this is an instruction from your master. You have to adhere and obey. You don't have the luxury and the choice to ask for justification. This is exactly what happened with Satan. When Allah created Adam with his own two hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he ordered the angels to prostrate. Satan was not an angel. He was from the jinn. And Allah told us in the Quran that he was from the jinn. And we know that the jinn are different from the angels. But Allah Azza wa Jal made him in the ranks of the angels. So the instruction was for him as well to prostrate. Satan did not. And when Allah asked him, why you did not prostrate to Adam as I've commanded you? He replied by expressing his logic, expressing what he thought. And he said, I am better than him. You created me from fire while you created him from clay and fire is better than clay. Hence, why would I prostrate? And we all know the fate of Satan because of his ill decision, because of his disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal, that he was cast in hell for eternity. Now the same thing goes for you and me. May Allah forbid. When we ask for justification, so a man says, okay, I've looked into Islam and I found that 95% of everything in Islam is logical and perfect. Any non-Muslim studying Islam, if he brings a pen and paper and writes a, a, a table with the pros and cons and lists the things of, that are essential in our religion, wallahi, the least he would find is 95%, if not 99%, perfect logical. Unfortunately, you cannot find such fair people except rarely. The vast majority are so influenced by the media that they don't even put some effort or time to study what Islam says. This is beside the point. So someone says, mashallah, 95% is perfect. But there are few issues like 5% or 3% or even 1% that 
that I'm not convinced of, that I'm not at ease with. The logical thing to say is, if 95% per, is perfect and correct, you should accuse your own intellect, your own understanding for not accepting these 5%. And you should accept them blindly. But this is how Satan works. He comes to you and says, why can't we Muslims eat pork? I can produce for you so many medical reports telling you how bad pork is for your health. Okay, understood. Why can't we drink intoxicants? Anyone would tell you the reason after a night of partying and being wasted and suffering from the hangover. Okay, okay understood. Why is usury or riba haram? Why is stealing haram? Why is killing others haram? Why is being abusive to your wife haram? Why uh, being undutiful to your parents is haram? Everything is crystal clear, logical. Why do we pray five times a day? Why do we fast? Why do you give zakat to the poor who don't work and they are underprivileged while we are privileged? Everything is logical. Then... Satan creeps in on one of the issues of the 5%. And then he tells you, okay, why is it that a man is prohibited from wearing gold? I'm rich. I have millions. Why can't I wear a golden ring or a golden watch? I don't know. Ah, then there's something wrong in Islam. If I can wear a ring of, uh, with a, a piece of diamond that is maybe a, a couple of million uh, uh, rials, I can't wear a golden ring that is 500 rials or 1,000 rials worth? I said, yes, this is Islam. Oh, this is not logical. Why does a man marry four if he wishes and a woman marries only one? Why is a man in inheritance is granted double what a female is granted. And so many doubts that if you sit with a scholar, he would clarify it to you. But shaitan or Satan, this is how he works. He diverts you from what is right into what is dubious, forcing you to neglect and ignore the 95% of actual proven facts and focus only on one or two issues. And then you get some infidels coming and saying, oh, I don't like Islam because it has this and that. Okay, no problem. What are you picking instead? I said, I'm picking this religion. But in his religion that he has chosen, there are 95% illogical things and 5% that are logical. Yet he accepts it. If, he then, if he's an atheist, there are 99% things that are illogical, yet 1% that he's mesmerized by, and he holds on to it as if it's the only ultimate truth in the world. So again, Jabir, this is something that we have no knowledge of. Our Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, we comply. It's like, why Fajr is two rak'ah, Maghrib is three and the rest of the prayers are four. I don't know. This is how it was prescribed, and this is how we take it, and Allah knows best.